In the dance of our conversation where wisdom meets wonder, we pause to acknowledge the spark behind today's enlightened episode, Keith's Cacao, a key to unlocking your inner magic. Have you ever felt a hidden reservoir of creativity, focus and energy within you, just waiting to be unleashed? This insight is shared with you by Keith's Cacao. Imagine a cup of pure, ceremonial grade cacao as your companion to unlocking that door. Harvested from sacred mountain rainforests of Guatemala, Keith's Cacao isn't just any cacao. It's a gateway to clarity and heightened creativity. Whether you're crafting your next masterpiece or seeking balance in the hustle, let Keith's Cacao guide you. Discover more at, at riseinterversity.com slash sponsors and embrace your transformation. Unleash your inner magic with Keith's Cacao. Welcome to the crossroads of dreams and wisdom, where ambition dances with the soul. You're listening to The Balanced Visionary, aligning ambition with soulful success. I'm Jen, your guide on this journey of self-discovery and achievement. Each week we'll explore the paths of personal growth, spiritual depth, and professional triumphs. Together, we'll unearth the secret to a life where success is not just what we achieve, but how we thrive. So visionaries, are you ready to transform your ambitions into a journey of the heart? Let's embark on this adventure together. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to another episode of The Balanced Visionary. Today's show is a little bit different than what I have been doing since uh, I don't have a guest in the studio. Don't worry, I've got guests lining up, but uh, we are entering into a special time. It is going to be the summer solstice at the time of this recording and I really want to integrate these seasons into the podcast and the business as well, because we are all about helping alchemists really set those solid foundations. So we're going to be talking a little bit about what the summer solstice is, ways that you can really tap into this energy for your life and your business. And a little bit of history about the summer solstice, summer solstice and what it's about. Now, for um, the summer solstice is a time of maximum light and power and energy on our planet. It marks the longest day of the year and a turning point where we can harness the sun's energy for growth transformation and abundance all of you out there who are following my podcast you visionary soulpreneur conscious entrepreneurs those who are here to make a change are one of the things that you may be looking for is how can i bring in more abundance in my business how can i bring in more clients well this is the episode for you the wisdom of the summer solstice isn't limited to just one day. It offers lessons and practices that can enhance our lives and our business throughout the year. So we're going to explore the rich history and spiritual significance of the summer sol solstice, ways to tap into the powerful energy, and how to apply this wisdom all year round. So settle in. Grab your cacao, tea, or coffee, or whatever your beverage of choice is, and let's journey together through this enlightening topic. Before I start giving you all of this information that I have, I want to share a personal story. Um, summer is one of my favorite times of the year. It has always been a magical time for me, and I remember particularly particularly one year, a few years back, 
when I was feeling lost and disconnected. And last year, actually, I did a ritual that has transformed my business (laughs) from last year to this year. And that's what kind of prompted this podcast. Um, Before that, I was feeling a little lost and disconnected. I wasn't getting where I wasn't where I thought I should be in my business. And I decided to just spend the day in nature, really connecting to Gaia, meditating and setting those intentions. And that day marked a significant shift in my life. And ever since then, I've really felt renewed sense of clarity and purpose. Now, I've had things pop up within this year that have allowed me to really start to shift. And when I was going back through my notes and looking at where I was last year around this time and what I did differently, that day and the ritual I had done was something that really helped illuminate my path forward. And that is what the summer solstice is about. It is the sun illuminating your path for you, and it marks a pivotal time. So on all these specific days for the wheel of the year, you can look back if you are consistently tapping into the energy and journaling, you can see where you are within your journey and what you need to tweak. Now, this experience is why the solstice holds a special place in my heart, and I am excited to share with you its wisdom today on this podcast. So, let's dive in a little bit about the history and the significance of the summer solstice. So, It is also known as midsummer. It occurs when one of the Earth's poles is at its maximum tilt towards the sun. And that typically happens around June 21st in the Northern Hemisphere. So today's podcast is being recorded on the 19th. And when we are, uh, I'm in the United States, so... The energy, we can already start to pick up on that, okay? And it is a day when we experience the longest period of daylight and the shortest night of the year. So when we are coming out of spring, that is when the sun is in our sky and the days are lasting longer. So the summer solstice is really pinpointing the longest day of the year and after that that is when we start to the sun starts to uh, not be so bright in the sky and then we come into winter but i will make sure to do a podcast about that later now the solstice has been celebrated by various cultures throughout history Uh, for instance the ancient egyptians aligned the um tapped into this in- energy making the events and their festivals along with rituals to honor their sun god Ra. In Europe, the Druids celebrated the solstice at Stonehenge when there's probably a huge festival that's going to be happening at Stonehenge. You can always tap into that or look it up. And that site is believed to be aligned with the sunrise on this special day. Native American tribes also held ceremonies and dances to honor the sun's energy and its vital role in sustaining life. Now, these historical celebrations highlighted the universal recognition of the solstice as a time of powerful energy and renewal. But beyond any of the historical cultures out there that have celebrated this time the solstice holds a deep spiritual significance and spiritually it represents the illumination and enlightenment it is like i said before it is illuminating your path and your journey on 
becoming your best self and really launching that visionary idea out there into the collective, like what you came down here to do. It's a time when the light of the sun is at its peak and it's the height of your personal and spiritual power. Not uh, just as the sun nurtures the earth, this period can also nurture your inner growth and transformation. It is a reminder that we too are beings of light, capable of shining brightly and illuminating the world around us. So tapping into that energy because you are light and a lot of us are going through this journey of we're coming out of the darkness and we are strengthening that light within us. And when you do that, it is people can see that that's when, you know, you're glowing. That's where that term comes from because you are strengthening that light within you. Now, the themes of the solstice are all about growth, abundance, and illumination. You're going to hear me say illumination a lot on this podcast because that's what is happening. And it's essential for us spiritual, conscious, and soulpreneurs to really gain an understanding about that. Because when you are putting your information out there when you are attracting your tribe, what they are attracted to is your light, is your energy. And this time during the summer solstice is reminding us to harness our inner light, to start to expand our horizons, to start to grow our visions. Um, what energy um, the energy of the solstice can be a catalyst for setting powerful intentions. Um, it's a great time to align with your higher selves and stepping boldly into your purpose. So when we really sit down and honor this time of the year, we can connect with our ancient traditions and really tap into the cycle of nature Tapping into a universal rhythm that will help support you on your journey. Understanding the history and the sp spiritual significance of the solstice helps us appreciate its power, its potential, and will really help set the stage for a transformative practices um, in the future and i'm going to give you some different practices here next in just a couple of minutes so i really want you to sit down and think about where you were last year around this time what do you need help with with illuminating your path how can you really set step into that energy to start to shine your light brighter out in the world okay so let's talk about tapping into the energy of the summer solstice now that i've given you some history and some spiritual significance i want to give you uh, steps on, on what to do to tap into it and how you can incorporate this not into just your life but also your business and these steps are going to be able to be used throughout the year so if you are listening to this podcast you know after the summer solstice make sure that you save it that way you can have it for next year but you can also go ahead and listen to it and apply these to your life throughout the year that's what i really want to give you information on being able to utilize this energy throughout the year not just at a specific time so the first thing that we need to talk about is preparation uh, the days leading up to the solstice are perfect for setting the intentions and also creating a sacred space. It's a time to reflect on what you want to manifest in your life and your business and write down those intentions and goals. 
focusing on your growth, focusing on your abundance, and focusing on your enlightenment. When creating a sacred space, it can enhance the, your connection with the solstice energy. This could be a small altar with uh, symbols of the sun. You can use candles. Candles like white or yellow are perfect for this. You can use different crystals like centering or I have a huge sunstone. And just to tell you about sunstone, this is great for soulpreneurs because it does enhance that creativity energy. So when you use different crystals, they will also tie into the energy of this time. Uh, you can add fresh flowers, pick colors that associate with the summer theme. You can go to the store or you can, when you're out in nature, you can pick a couple, but really, you know, create that sacred space for you to tap into this creative energy and pull that into setting the intentions that you want for that growth, that abundance, and that enlightenment for the year forward. Also, you can include different element, uh, elements, elements that resonate with you personally. You can make a vision board. You can bring in, um, I actually have crystals that are little animals. So I can use a turtle. I have birds. I have fish. All different things. You can start to pull in those meaningful objects or when you are out in nature, like I said, pull the, you know, when you're gathering fresh flowers, you can pull in different items that really resonate with you. Know that intention is everything. There's no set yes or no way to do it. Like if you don't have a sunstone, you don't have to, if you can't afford it, you don't have to go out and buy one. But just know that when you set your intentions and you make it personal to you, you can really start to create that sacred space that you need when you want to enhance your connection with the solstice energy or any energy for that matter moving forward. Now, when the solstice arrive, there are several rituals and practices you can engage in. There are many out there. You know, I'm not, I'm going to give you specific ones that I use, but also know that there are many out there from many different amazing people sharing their wisdom. But one powerful practice is yoga. Okay, the sun salutation pose in yoga, that is one that specifically honors the sun and will help you align your body and your mind with its energy. When you practice sun salutations at sunrise, it can be particularly potent as you welcome the new day in the height of the sun power okay we get our energy from the sun if we didn't have the sun this planet and and us we would not thrive that's why many ancient cultures out there did a lot of sun worshiping because they understood the energy and the powerful um how powerful it was and important to our survival. Now, meditation and visualizations are also effective ways to harness this energy. Find a quiet place to sit and close your eyes and visualize the sun's light filling your entire being. Imagine this light illuminating your path, helping bring that clarity, that inspiration and empowerment that you need or would like to harness throughout the year and during this time. You can also use this time to meditate on your intentions. And when you meditate on your intentions, make sure that you are visualizing already having them, that they are coming into fruition with the support of your higher guidance, your spiritual team, and this energy, okay? So when you are meditating on your intentions, I always like to 
I visualize like it's already happened. I'm, I'm stepping into that energy and I'm using and, and pulling in this specific energy, the summer solstice to help assist me in doing that. Now, journaling is another powerful tool. You will hear me talk about journaling a lot. This is how I know where I was last year was by journaling what I did, what worked for me, what didn't work for me, and where I wanted to be moving forward. Now, I'm not quite where I want to be exactly in my journey, but because I've journaled, I've been able to go back and look at what I need to tweak within my journey. What did come up for me, like the, especially I'm going to, before I go into the next thing, I want to share this right now. So this year especially helped, I had situations that helped bring out a lot of shadow aspects, not self themes that I needed to work on. And what I realized was that the light, the energy that I was pulling in illuminated those areas inside of me to come up to the surface to heal that I needed to clear to be able to get to that next spot. So keep that in mind. But, you know, when you are journaling, especially during these this time, here are some um, questions that you can journal about. What does illumination mean to me? How can I harness the energy of the solstice for growth in my life and business? And do some automatic writing, write freely and openly without judgment and allow those insights and ideas to flow. And when you do that, you can come back and review that next year when you get to this point. If you are tapping into all these amazing points in our, you know, the wheel of the year, it's a great time for you to start to reflect. This is perfect for goal setting. And checking in and holding yourself accountable for where you're at on your journey, what you need to be working on, where you may be procrastinating, uh, holding yourself back. It's perfect for you to be doing this. So this is why you, again, you'll hear me talk a lot about journaling because it will help you stay accountable for where you are in your mission. Okay. So the next thing that you can do, and I touched a little bit uh, on it above, was uh, create that altar. Now, when you, I have an altar that I am con pretty much, not constantly, but I am changing throughout the month, okay? And I really decorate it according to what specific time we are in the wheel of the year. Now, when you are, if you want to create an altar and altars don't have to be specific, you can set up several different altars throughout your house. It is applying the different symbols or different items that you want to bring in that will associate during this time. People do this all the time during Christmas, which is the winter solstice, okay? So we have the summer solstice and on the opposite side is the winter solstice. And that is, that's Yule. That's what people are doing. They go and they decorate their whole entire houses just for that specific time in the year and guys christmas is a pagan holiday all right it is the celebration of yule and may not be on the correct day that it's supposed to be it's on the 25th but that is to kind of give you an example how many people take you know have a a fireplace mantle and they decorate that they put items on their table start to do that within your home during these specific times on that that we are going through in this cycle on our planet now what i like to do is also include the 
items that will represent the four elements, and that is earth, air, fire, and water. And this helps balance and ground your intentions. I am working on launching the course for the intro into shamanism, the Moon Eye Key, so that I can start doing initiations for people. Now, um, I had an I there was something there. Oh, when I am doing my rituals, I will call in all four directions. So that is why I like to represent the four different elements. But you don't technically have to do that. But I do like to put something on my altar that will represent earth, fire, earth, water, fire, and air. Okay. So if you don't know exactly what to do, you can. I have a specific chalice that is a crystal chalice that I use to put my water, a candle for fire. I use a feather or incense or wind chimes for air, and crystals can represent earth you can put dirt i have um a little nice little pretty bowl that i put on my altar that i will put a little bit of dirt in there as well that can represent the element of earth so spend you know when i do this i like to spend each day on my altar i have a vision board right above it so that i am reflecting and seeing those intentions and connecting on the specific energy that i am doing which this one will be the summer solstice energy now the next thing is connecting with nature I can't tell you how important it is to really start to get outside, guys, and connect with nature. I live in a huge city. It's, I live in Houston, Texas. So it's, I have to go out of the city to really get out into nature. But what I have found recently is these parks and different areas or pockets inside of Houston where I can get outside and just connect, go for a walk, just get outside and really start to connect with nature because it will help heal you. All right. Grounding. It has so many different benefits to it and it's being scientifically proven on how it will help you heal. And it's essential for you to do this, especially within your business. Now, the solstice is a celebration of the natural world. It, so spending time out, outdoors can help deepen your connection to this powerful energy during this time. Go for a hike, walk barefoot on the grass, or just simply sit in a park and allow the sun to shine on you. Really tap into the different sounds that you may be hearing, different smells that are around you, different sights, watching nature. I, I love to watch the animals. <laughs> so uh, that's one of my favorite things to do. Also, we have a park in the museum district here in Houston that they actually have a garden. And sometimes when I'm out during lunch, I will stop by there and walk through their garden. I really like the area that they have. It's really soft grass. So um, that's where I can go and get my grounding in. But I can see the butterflies. I can see the birds and hear the animals and smell the flowers. And it really allows me to tap into who I truly am and this energy that is potent on our planet at this time. And you can really start to feel the oneness with nature because you are made of earth, guys. You are made of star stuff. We are made out of the earth. You come from the earth. When you die, you're going back into the earth, okay? So this is the connecting of the oneness with nature. Now, 
the next thing is if it's possible, start to gather with like-minded individuals to celebrate. Uh, group rituals and gatherings can help amplify the energy and also help create a sense of community and shared intentions. Now, I want to say one thing on this that is important because it's important who you connect your energy with. Make sure that all the people are on the same page and that are really aligned with you. One thing that I have not talked about that I really do want to talk about is rituals, okay? They're in human design. When you get three or more people together, you form what's called a penta. And the that's pentagram, okay? The penta actually is creating an energy and a consciousness above you. So all of y'all's energy connecting is creating a separate um energy ball above you that is developing its own consciousness. And I like to get into like Friday, I'm planning on going out and hanging out with a group of girls that I do here that I know really well here in Houston. But I don't, I'm not fully diving into like performing rituals or anything like that because I feel discipline is most important. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it first and foremost, okay? Because there are people out here like me that are trying to clear up this energy. So if you don't fully know, what you're doing. Don't just perform a ritual if you don't know. And if you're tapping into specific goddesses, I have to say this, make sure you're doing your research because not all of them have the best intentions. Okay? So be mindful of that when you are gathering with other individuals. But when you do, for me, I like to do it as a celebration. So just like I referenced Christmas before, you know, Christmas it, you get together with people, you share, you have a potluck, you eat, that type of thing. Start to gather with like-minded individuals so that you can bring in that celebration. For the summer solstice, bonfires are huge. This is a great time for when you are journaling those intentions and you get together with a group, build a bonfire. Throw some coffee on there if you're if you get have mosquitoes, okay? That will help keep the mosquitoes away. But that's a perfect time for you to burn those intentions and celebrate together. Now, by engaging in the practices that I have given you above, you can really fully embrace the energy of the summer solstice, okay? You can harness its power for your personal, your business, and your spiritual growth. But the wisdom of the solstice doesn't end here. You can find additional information. We're going to explore on how to apply these insights and practices throughout the year that I just gave you, ensuring that the light of the solstice continues to guide, illuminate, and inspire you throughout the journey. Okay, so let's talk about how you can apply this solstice wisdom that you are gaining throughout the year. Well, one way to do this is by aligning our goals and our actions with the cycle of the season. This is where I keep bringing in the wheel of the year and journaling and knowing where you are at on your path. So each season offers its own unique energy. It will offer its own unique lessons, but understanding these cycles can help you plan and execute your projects in har harmony with the energy, the natural world, and the world around us, okay? So this is where you're exiting out of the Gregorian calendar system. And you are going with the natural calendar system that was created and what we should be following. 
So, for example, the energy of the solstice energy is all about growth and expansion. It's about illuminating your path, making it a perfect time for you to launch any new projects and taking those bold steps in your business. Now, as we move into the later months of the years, we can focus on harvesting the fruits of our labor and reflecting in on our progress. So in the fall time, that's the harvest season. In the winter time, that represents death. So you kind of get my <clears throat> where I'm going with this. So continuous growth and illumination will require you to do that regular check-in. And even when you are getting into goals settings or you know reflecting back in your journal this is where you will hold yourself accountable okay this is where you can see what you need to tweak along your journey one of the biggest lessons that i've had in this solopreneur journey is i would create an offer i would put it out there i wouldn't get much you know it wouldn't get any traction. Uh, no one would sign up. And then I would sit there and I would beat myself up for it. I'd be all up in my head. It would trigger an emotional wave. And then I would be on to the next thing. But what I didn't do is I didn't take a step back and tweak and see what needed to be fixed to help that grow. What did I need to do to nurture that? Okay. And <clears throat> I have learned along the journey that it's all about tweaking. It's all about doing those regular check-ins. It's all about doing that intention setting, okay, and holding myself accountable. So this, when we set those intentions during the solstice, we can start to make it a practice to revisit and refine those intentions throughout the year, and this is where I really want to start implementing this into Rise University in the podcast because monthly and quarterly reflections can help you stay aligned with your goals and make it net and make those necessary adjustments. Okay. And you can. It's all going through a cycle and it all plays a purpose. It all. Nature is so beautiful when you really start to tap in and set, you know, allow that energy become one with it. Okay. So, um, for the spiritual entrepreneurs, the soulpreneurs, the conscious entrepreneurs, integrating the solstice energy wisdom into your business can help lead to profound transformation okay i'm going to say that again when you integrate the solstice wisdom and all the energy of the wheel the the wheel of the year into your business it can lead to profound transformation start to consider how you can bring more light and growth into your business practices. This might involve creating a work environment that supports creativity and well-being. It might include incorporating mindfulness, which I have an ex excellent book on Rise University for that, and spiritual practices into your daily routine and aligning your business goals with the, your higher purpose. So balancing that work and spiritual growth is crucial, all right? You have to. This is why inside of Rise University, we teach the body, mind, spirit education, okay? The first course that you are ever to take is the Awaken Alchemy, where it teaches you how to balance the four key areas of your life. So as entrepreneurs, it's easy to get caught up in the hustle and forget the importance of nurturing your inner selves, okay? You need that personal development, that physical development, that spiritual development, as well as the the business development side of things for you to birth your vision out into the world, okay? So the solstice reminds us that true success comes from within. By prioritizing your spiritual well-being and creating that solid foundation for 
state, blah, 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 tongue-tied, by prioritizing your spiritual well-being, you can create a solid foundation for sustainable growth and abundance. So, to wrap up this podcast, in conclusion, the summer solstice offers a unique opportunity to harness powerful energy for your personal, spiritual, and business growth. I hope that by understanding the history, the spiritual significance, um, applying these rituals and practices that I have given you and the wisdom throughout the year, you can start to illuminate your path and start to achieve your highest potential. So I want to thank you so much before uh, I want to thank you so much for joining me on this journey. You guys help reflect the light that I'm sharing out in the world back to me. And I cannot tell you how grateful I am. I do hope that you feel inspired and empowered by this podcast to start to embrace not only the summer solstice, but all the amazing potent energy that is happening on our planet and really start to integrate its wisdom into your life and your business. So remember, you have the power to shine brightly and create the life that you desire. Before I let you go, I want you to, I want to encourage you really to share all your experiences and your insights on this podcast and how you are celebrating the solstice. What intentions are you setting? And if you are stuck or you don't know how to get started or you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and connect. And I would love to hear from you. So stay tuned. We've got some more amazing guests coming on to the podcast and I'm going to start integrating these little nugget podcast of how to tap in the energy, how to really grow and expand and illuminate your path moving forward. This is Jen signing off and I hope you have a blessed and illuminating summer solstice. Bye now. Thank you for tuning into The Balanced Visionary. I hope this episode has brought you valuable insights and inspiration. If it resonated with you and you feel like you can light up someone else's day too, please take a moment to screenshot, share, and tag me on Instagram. I love seeing your post and getting to know you better on a personal level. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform so you never miss an episode. Join us next time as we continue our journey towards aligning ambition with soulful success. Until then, keep balancing, keep dreaming, and I'll see you in our next visionary encounter. 